so hello everyone myself venu and uh, i'm working as a lecturer in mechanical engineering at government polytechnic varangal and uh, subject dealing uh, refrigeration and air conditioning so today's video lesson and uh, my lecture goes on regarding the evaporators and uh, types of evaporators so hope uh, if you have seen the last video sessions last video classes so we have completed uh, till the part of the expansion devices we have dealing the chapter of uh, refrigeration equipment and uh, a sub topic in that uh, to in today's classes evaporators and types of evaporators so till we have seen uh, the, uh, the more the most important components like uh, a compressor the types of compressors and uh, next condensers the types of condensers and we have seen the expansion devices so a lot of uh, Um, devices we have seen regarding that the subtypes and explained uh, elaborately in that in the same manner we will complete the evaporators topic also and additionally we will see some uh, um, the additional equipments involved in that so just by looking at the diagram uh, we can go for that in this so just uh, directly mo moving on to the objectives so in this uh, today video lesson after completion of this uh, period uh, you can able to understood or you are able to know what is the evaporator what is the function of that evaporator and we will see the list of classifications of evaporators and uh, each and every type of our evaporator uh, the main evaporators uh, what you are using so the main principles of them uh, we will learn in this uh, today's class in continuation we will see what uh, regarding the uh, the additional component that is a dryer okay we will see the dryer the types and uh, Uh, where we are using the dryer what is the function of the dryer so we will see in the today's class so continuation coming to the introduction part uh, as already we are seeing in the vapor compression refrigeration system so evaporator is also known as uh, the cooling coil or uh, or a freezer so why it is named as uh, like a, a cooling coil or a cooler or freezer so the whatever the ultimate thing uh, what you are looking for Uh, in the refrigerator so that is cooling effect so output what you are so for example a customer will see that uh, how the cooling effect will be there right so he, he will not uh, look into look into the uh, like other equipment functioning uh, he doesn't know all those things just uh, they will focus on the what is the output it means how the cooling effect you are getting the primary thing he will see in that is how the cooling effect you are getting in that refrigerator so in which component you are getting the cooling effect and where we are using the cooling coils where the low temperatures are created so that component can be named as a evaporator okay so mostly we are just like a refrigerator when you open the box a coldness can be seen in that so the total complete box can be uh, taken as a evaporator where it can be called as a freezer or a, uh, like a uh, uh, like a cool uh, like evaporator box or a cooler box okay or a refrigerator we are calling it that that is a refrigerator why because it is getting the cooling effect in that so here uh, the coldness is produced in the evaporator so as uh, uh, low temperatures are created in that component uh, where you see the component construction or where it is placed means it is placed after the uh, the expansion device and uh, before the compression compressor so it is placed in between the, the compressor and the expansion device now if you observe is a uh, evaporator is placed at the low pressure side of the refrigerating system so uh, as i already told in the previous video lessons that expansion device and uh, the evaporator so both are located at the low pressure side of the system whereas uh, if you take compressor and condenser is located at the high pressure side of the refrigerating system okay next uh, we'll see if it further uh, if you see the function of the how the refrigerant is flowing uh, it is coming from the expansion wall and it enters into the evaporator at a temperature uh, below the temperature required to be maintained in the refrigerated space so here uh, it where after uh, moving out from the expansion device so it enters with a very low temperatures in the refrigerated space okay. it means uh, for example uh, it will enters at very low temperatures uh, for, uh, for example if you need uh, like a 2 degree centigrade or like that uh, 
the whatever the refrigerant entering uh, into the system it may be in minus centigrade like minus 8 or minus 10 degrees centigrade but uh, our requirement is a 2 degrees centigrade so uh, depending on requirement temperature requirement that requirement the same temperature will not enter into that lesser temperature will be uh, sent into that uh, evaporator component why because if you send the same uh, the required temperature into that so it cannot be attained so due to some losses or due to some uh, for example if you take a refrigerator you are opening and closing the doors or uh, some surrounding temperatures are affecting on that so due to that you are getting required temperature you are getting less than the required temperature all right so that is the reason why uh, the low temperatures are created than the required temperatures and uh, we are sending into the evaporator component next uh, here uh, what is happening in the function or the operation involved in that uh, evaporator is it extracts the heat from the refrigerated space and produces coldness so the heat is absorbed in the evaporator heat absorption is taking place it is extracting the heat from the the products and coldness is giving to the products and produces the coldness here whereas the heat rejection is taking place in the condenser heat absorption or heat extraction is taking place from the, in the evaporator Right. Now, if you observe, next we move on to the uh, the classification of computers. As we have seen, uh, what is the evaporator? Where it is placed? What is the the main function in the evaporator? What is happening? Then we move on to the next classification of evaporators. Uh, first uh, thing, so it is uh, depending on the uh, the fact that is uh, the type of construction, how it is made. So a lot of uh, uh, classifications are there in that so meanwhile you will see the most used uh, uh, evaporators are that bait tube coil evaporator just a uh, very simple like a, a tube a tube will be there uh, plates are placed on that just like the fins will be acted on that so they can be taken as bait tube coil evaporator or finned tube so number of fins will be placed aluminum fins over the tube so the, those are the finned tube evaporators plate evaporators and the shell and the tube evaporators so there is a shell just like we seen in the condenser there will be a shell and uh, inside that the tubing section will be there the same construction you can see here and uh, shell and coil evaporator they are placed like a coil same the tube will be taken they are provided like a coil type of structure and there will be shell the tube in tube evaporator as we see in the tube in tube condenser so double tube condenser like that here also double tube evaporator so one tube will be there and inside another tube will be passed so we will see next <clears throat> so according to the manner in which the liquid refrigerant is fed so it means here uh, how the so depending on the load conditions in the refrigerant so some constructions are made like a, a completely filled refrigerant will be there in the operator or uh, some dry type of operator so depending on the requirement only the refrigerant will be sent then it will completely become vaporized or in some cases uh, that complete all the tubes will be filled up with the liquid refrigerant that is those are the flooded evaporators right so other one is a dry expansion evaporator and next uh, the first one is a flooded evaporator okay next so according to the mode of heat transfer so heat transfer if you see the these are those are the convection type so they may be natural convection and they may be forced convection evaporator next one according to operating conditions according to operating conditions so how they are operated so completely frosted frosting the requirement is a, a frosting operator is required those are frosting operators next non frosting operators just for a simple purpose we are using the non frosting operators and defrosting operators okay we will see these cases and next uh, so coming to uh, exam uh, just uh, explanation regarding one type of evaporator that what is a flooded type evaporator flooded type of, as already i told that the complete evaporate tubes are filled with the liquid refrigerant okay so just uh, observe the diagram here and uh, we'll see what is happening and uh, what is the required operation in this how you are uh, getting the cooling effect in this uh, evaporator uh, flooded type means you can identify here is a liquid plus vapor mixture or complete liquid mixture so can be filled in the evaporator coils here so at a side of uh, you can see at uh, both the sides of a evaporator so it is a 
connected with the flash chamber it is known as a flash chamber so here the level of the refrigerant liquid refrigerant is a controlled liquid from whatever the receiver it is coming so from the receiver it will enter and collect in the flash chamber so to avoid the increase of the uh, refrigerant above the, the pipe levels of the evaporator so there will be a component called a float wall will be there or float control so it will maintain the level of the liquid refrigerant in the flash chamber and a remaining position or a remaining place whatever whatever it, it is there so it is a, there is a, uh, a vapor refrigerant uh, will be present over here and below that liquid refrigerant will be there okay and uh, and buffel plates will also provided here liquid vapor both the refrigerant in the form liquid plate liquid refrigerant vapor refrigerant so both will be present so this is the line diagram of that and uh, after that you can see the vapor refrigerant uh, as a passage uh, uh, from the top it will enters into the the vapor refrigerant uh, it enters into the compressor component so this is a the line diagram of that just we will see some uh, uh, explanation regarding this flooded uh, type of operator so as already told that it is a there is always uh, the full of liquid refrigerant present in the tubes of the operator you can see at the sides so there will be curved tubes out there where is it has a liquid refrigerant present inside that it always completely filled with the liquid refrigerant so here this uh, level of the liquid refrigerant is always maintained by the float valve there is a control valve here float valve the liquid which is coming from the receiver it will collect in the uh, flash chamber along with the evaporator coils so this level of the up to the uh, the pipe uh, the end pipe of the evaporator at the top so it has to maintain with the help of float valve now the liquid refrigerant enters into the evaporator flows through the float wall into the flash chamber and flow down to the tubes first it enters at the down tube and it will flow in the direction to the upwards slowly and uh, due to heat transfer the liquid refrigerant boils now what happens here so it comes with very low temperature so whatever the, here in uh, at the coil positions whatever there so there will be assume like some box type of structure is provided so in that we are placing some products or anything to be cooled so whatever the hot uh, temperature of the products are there so it will be absorbed by the refrigerant so it means uh, the heat transfer is uh, taking place where the liquid refrigerant get boils and uh, turns into the vaporized states so the evaporation will start here the mixture of vapor and liquid refrigerant collects in a flash chamber okay the mixture of liquid and uh, vapor uh, refrigerant collects in a flash chamber you can see at the it uh, accommodates both the phase phases of a refrigerant that is a liquid refrigerant and a vapor refrigerant now the vapor and liquid are separated in this chamber the flash is nothing but a, it consists of like a vapor uh, refrigerant mm, it's a flash uh, due to light weight the vapor rises to the top of the flash chamber is obviously so light weight it will comes to the upwards and uh, the baffle plates are provided you can see the arrangement here uh, so where uh, you can see at the top of a diagram here so before it moving to the compressor part there will be a buffel plates so what it will do so it will make contact with these plates and the moisture which uh, the liquid uh, refrigerant which is present in the vapor form so it will uh, struck at the buffel plates it will strike the buffel plates and uh, whatever the liquid particles are there so it will uh, prevent entry into the compressor now vapor is drawn by the compressor uh, no only the liquid remains in the evaporator so at every time the evaporation is taking place vapor refrigerant will move upwards due to its light weight may contact with the baffle plates any liquid particles out there it will get uh, obstructed here and the liquid particles will drop here only the vapor refrigerant will be sent into the compressor part so this is regarding the the flooded type evaporator remember the diagram and uh, remember the point that flooded type in the sense but all the time the evaporator com coils are filled with the liquid refrigerant now so it is used in industrial applications so most of the applications why because uh, 
more the requirement of more the loads can be seen in the industrial applications at every time it is getting done so mostly uh, instead of domestic these type of uh, evaporator mostly used in the industries and particularly so used in a uh, food processing and uh, chemical industries okay. so this is regarding the uh, the applications of flood type and next a very simple and most used the type of evaporator is a finned tube evaporator and this can be established you can see a, in lot of applications of air conditioning systems and uh, the domestic refrigerators you can see here very simple application uh, very uh, more quantity more large large number of applications can be uh, using this uh, finned tube evaporator very simple uh, very simple in design uh, here the complicated one is uh, the fins okay fins are placed here it may be aluminum fin or plate type or uh, just like a, a thin film type of uh, aluminum fins are placed widely uh, so in that uh, you can see a bait tube is provided inside that so you can to see the two passages refrigerant is entering from the expansion device and refrigerant is going out to the compressor part okay and what happening here through the fins the you can take air or uh, sorry, this is a fin type so air is making contact with the tubes as well as the fins so if you place the wide spacing of the fins uh, any dust uh, or any uh, the clogging can be uh, avoided by with the help of the fins which are placing widely here okay next uh, so it is widely used in uh, air conditioning applications and uh, as already told that uh, it's uh, provided around the coils to increase the surface area of the evaporator so heat transfer rate will increase this it will increase the surface area of the uh, evaporator if you are simply uh, if you are not providing any fins here the most of the the more more quantity of air will passes through the gaps between the pipes and uh, very minor or less quantity of uh, uh, the surface area of the evaporator will be created due to no non use of the these uh, fins so must fins are provided to increase the surface area of the operator now fins increase the rate of heat transfer note that point fins increase the rate of heat transfer so that is why you are using the fins now usually four to six are uh, so you can note it down uh, for a for a inch i think uh, for a centimeter each centimeter length okay uh, like a 10 mm for a 10 mm gap uh, uh, four to six fins are provided generally mostly they are they are made with the aluminium type of material uh, it's a very cheaper one okay and uh, four to six fins are provided for each centimeter length and uh, so here white fins i as well told uh, to re to avoid the clogging that uh, uh, the fins uh, are provided with some wide spacing is provided instead of the narrow spacing if you are clo very closer together the dust will clog in between them and it will affect on the the working of the tray evaporator okay. right. for low temperature applications uh, the fin provided gapping provided between them is more the low temperature application means very uh, minor temperature like a uh, sorry low temperatures like a uh, so minus centigrade like minus 5 minus 10 minus 15 degrees centigrade okay so this is regarding the, the shell and uh, sorry the fin tube uh, evaporator coming to the next type shell and tube operator so just uh, i will pass this uh, just by explaining uh, simply uh, why because already we have seen this explanation in the condensers a very uh, similar diagram just uh, uh, the working is different in this case okay just it comes uh, the construction is same it consists of a steel shell uh, cylindrical in shape fitted with number of parallel tubes and uh, it is also called chiller Okay, most uh, uh, industrial applications instead of evaporator they may call as like, chillers so type of uh, shell and tube evaporators again there are uh, two types in this one is a flooded type and other one is a dry expansion type okay so let us see one type in this case it is a uh, dry expansion type uh, shell and tube evaporator okay now you can observe here what is happening uh, first uh, observe all the what are the components involved in this a very simple one you can see here at left side you can see the two passages where uh, uh, at the bottom you can see the liquid refrigerant entry is taking place 
a liquid refrigerant entry. So during this entry, you can see a thermostatic control is placed here. It means a temperature control can be seen here. So where you can uh, detect the what is the temperature uh, limit at this path, what is the temperature obtained uh, during this entry. So you can record the temperature. At every time you can see what is the or uh, you can uh, maintain that particular temperature. It means if you want uh, the same the temperature of five degree centigrade, you are adjusting your thermostatic control wall in your refrigerator. I think, hope you can see the adjustment there. 1 degree, 2 degree, 3 degree, 4 degree, 5 degree, like you have the adjustments there. So there you can, there is a temperature control uh, switch will be there. So you can adjust them where the temperature can be maintained. In, right. Next, uh, if you observe, liquid refrigerant enters through the bottom section of that. And uh, it will flow through the pipes here. And uh, at the top, you can see the left side, there will be a suction line which is moving to the compressor. And the top of the shell, there will be a fluid uh, to be chilled entry and a fluid to be exit exit so it means uh, there may be water or some other cooling medium here it will enter through the section you can see some dotted lines are provided how they are moving it is coming to the downwards completely and again it is moving upwards coming downwards and moving upwards and uh, going through the exit here you can see buffel plates are provided here for the moment of uh, the, the fluid which is entering uh, through the entry part so the moment should be created like this. If you provide the buffel plates like this, you can see a line here at the centers. So those are the buffel plates. Now uh, here the fluid will make contact with all the pipes here at every time. One, two, three, four. Four times it is making contact here. Likewise, if you place a number of buffel plates, it will make number of times the contact with that. Okay, so this is a dry expansion type. At every time it is not completely filled with the liquid. So you can see part of that is filled with the liquid here at the bottom of the shell and at the top of the shell there is a provide uh, is a provision for a vapor refrigerant and it will send to the pipes and uh, it accommodated in one section at the top and uh, here the refrigerant will be sent outside now just we will see some points regarding this uh, it will flow through the tubes refrigerant and uh, liquid uh, to be chilled inside the shell so completely in the shell the whatever the fluid to be cooled it will uh, sorry uh, the cooling medium will uh, move through move into the shell the refrigerant will move in the pipes so buffel plates increase the overall heat transfer if you place like that uh, if not uh, what happens here the completely the liquid come downwards and it will not uh, it will be settled here at the bottom only uh, limited quantity of uh, uh, the cooling medium will pass through the exit after filling so it will be a very difficult one so it has to move continuously next uh, the buffel plates uh, can see. so it will increase that so what are the refrigerant extracts heat from the fluid now the heat exchange will take place during this as uh, you know the everything what happens here the heat uh, is absorbing by the refrigerant now the phase change is taking place from the liquid refrigerant to the vapor refrigerant so here the heat extracts uh, the refrigerant extracts the heat from the fluid and gets superheated in the last portion of the tube so due to every time making contact with the cooling medium here so what is our optimum uh, what is the last our aim is uh, at the exit the fluid completely has to get uh, the cool uh, fluid has to get outside that is the output of that Okay, next uh, you can uh, superheated in the last portion of the tube. Right. The refrigerant is collected in the end of the chamber. Now from there it is drawn by the compressor. You can see the suction line it is uh, going to the compressor. So these evaporators used for refrigerating units. Uh, here these evaporators most used for uh, from 2 tons capacity to 250 tons. It can be used for medium to large ton capacity system. Okay. Next one is the shell and coil evaporator. So there will be a shell here and uh, you can see here, uh, a coil type of structure is there okay a coil type of structure cooling coil will be there so where uh, you can see the liquid is entering here from the expansion device this is entry and it will flow through the coil and you can see the suction outlet in means uh, the uh, to the suction line the outlet is going to the compressor part and whatever the shell is there in the shell you can see the cooling medium that is water is entering from the top and at the bottom it is moving out through the here 
so there is a tank shell it is an insulated one so this is very simple in construction so just uh, observe the points here again a steel shell is present where uh, you can see the tube coil is in a spiral shape or a coil shape which is fitted here so the refrigerant flow through the coils and uh, liquid to be chilled passes through the shell so now i am cooling the water that is our optimum aim here just to uh, cool the water uh, it has to pass through the evaporator coils so liquid to be chilled passes through the shell and comes in contact with chilled tubes and gets cooled okay so this uh, chilled water can be used for further purpose they may be used for drinking purpose or uh, so mainly you can see this uh, simple case can be used in the water coolers shell and coil type it can be used in the uh, like water uh, water cooler okay this type of uh, evaporators uh, uh, the cooling water temperature is maintained 5 degrees centigrade and above to avoid freezing problems so whatever the water is entered here if you maintain minus centigrade in the evaporator what is the problem here water get uh, like a solid form if you maintain below 0 degree centigrade it will get ice and uh, no flow of water will be taken place so must and should you have to maintain above 5 degree centigrade to avoid the freezing of the the water which is entering in the evaporator so mostly used for 2, two tons to uh, 10 ton capacity plants these shell and coil evaporators are used okay right so this is regarding uh, some basic explanation of uh, the evaporators so hope uh, you understood regarding the evaporators what is function where it is placed what are the types of evaporators in that we are saying flooded type and a dry type of expansion type shell and tube shell and coil so these are a few important uh, evaporators which are used in a domestic as well as for commercial purposes hope right and next uh, we will move on to the explanation of a, a a component uh, named as a dryer so we will see that where it is placed what is the function of a dryer what are the types of the dryer so we will see in this uh, continuation class okay and uh, okay uh, coming to the explanation of the dryer the the, the safety device uh, were mostly used in the refrigeration line so where the refrigerant is flowing from the part of mainly uh, in between the condenser and expansion wall mainly it is placed in the uh, the line of a liquid that is a liquid line this is a dryer component is placed so we'll see what is the function of that so it is used to remove the moisture content from the refrigerant whenever some uh, minor or a little amount of moisture is present during uh, uh, the charging of a compre uh, the compressor or like that so here this dryer is uh, helpful to remove the moisture content readily from the refrigerant if uh, if the moisture is present if you are not using the dryer so that moisture content may get uh, choke the walls uh, in the expansion device at the end of the expansion device or in the evaporator they may form like a solid form uh, due to at zero degree centigrade uh, for low temperature applications it is very problem okay right next uh, the dryer is placed in between the condenser and expansion wall uh, as a as a what the need it must and should be placed in the liquid line so here right next uh, the dryer is a cylindrical shell it is a cylindrical shell so just uh, we'll see the land diagram of the dryer and uh, where you can see how it can how the moisture content can be removed means a special type of material is used in there so that is a, a drying material called, name called as a desiccant material uh, I will give that uh, names for that uh, for that uh, desiccant material where it readily absorbs the moisture content uh, from uh, any form of a uh, the refrigerant it may be liquid vapor or solid form of refrigerant most cases uh, uh, here in the refrigeration system it is placed in the liquid line so it will absorb the moisture content from the liquid line why because problem will happen before uh, in the expansion wall so it should be placed before the expansion wall that is the thing right so this is the uh, so already explained that and now this is also the same point and uh, here the some component uh, compounds you can see the desiccant materials like a uh, silica gel activate alumina calcium sulfate calcium chloride etc mostly using the silica gel or activated uh, alumina is used here and uh, these will they will readily absorb the moisture content from the refrigerant okay Right. So coming to classification of dryers, there are uh, two types of uh, dryers. 
one is a throw away type it means uh, if, uh, if you are using at one time uh, after the, the effectiveness of that particular uh, discrete material is completed so it has to be removed and uh, a new one has to be uh, accommodated there so it is a one type that is a throw, throw away type dryers or non refillable they they cannot be the discrete material cannot be refilled again or it is a completely sealed type dryer you can have to use only once once in a lifetime of that particular dryer next second type is refillable type dryers so just uh, you can remove that particular up, up to the part of a dryer material and uh, we can charge that and we can use again and again refillable type of dryers so we'll see the first non refillable type or uh, where uh, it cannot be used uh, again so you can observe the components very simple one so you can see at the center where that is the seventh uh, one it's uh, indicating that as a desiccant mostly are using the silica gel in that and you can see the inlet connection at the uh, this here which is passing through the the dryer at the, you can see at the right side of that and the outlet you can see at this here uh, so in between that some plates or strainers are provided at the exit uh, strainer in the sense uh, it will uh, avoid uh, like a, you can see some filter type of structure or strainer or some net type of structure is provided this act like a strainer so any foreign particles are coming through the liquid through the condenser so it will be obstructed at that part why because uh, next to for example if you are using capillary tube as expansion device having very smaller diameter so it may get stuck at the entry of that uh, expansion device it may damage the component right so must and should uh, strainer can also be used uh, here along with the dryer so here you see some points regarding this the shell is uh, charged with the moisture absorbing chemicals that is a silica gel here so it is equipped with the inlet and outlet openings direct openings will be there now a strainer is provided at the outlet of it as i explained that what is the use of strainer next uh, so it is permanently sealed with moisture absorbing chemical agents inside as i told it's completely sealed one it cannot be uh, refilled again it cannot be used again so chemicals cannot be replaced when they lose their effectiveness right? that is a sealed type or non refillable type dryers next uh, already told that it is placed in the liquid line between the condenser and the expansion wall the drying agents uh, silica gel activated alumina removes moisture slowly than chemical dryers okay so we use other chemical chemical based dryers they remove the moisture content readily uh, when compare with the silica gel and activated alumina so they are left in the system for long periods or permanently okay permanently they can place there uh, until their uh, uh, the effectiveness of that particular uh, uh, gel or uh, that uh, chemical has to be uh, gone out next uh, calcium sulfate and calcium oxide and calcium chloride or uh, removes moisture very quickly so you can take uh, these mostly using silica gel but if you want to absorb the moisture content very readily or quickly so these are preferable one based on calcium it is a calcium sulfate calcium oxide and calcium chloride etc so they should be kept in the system after in installation for more than 24 hours right next uh, refillable type dryers so these are you can see the how the walls are placed here that wall a wall b wall c so depending on our requirement we can send the refrigerant uh, it has to be sent to the dryer or when you are uh, when you want to remove the dryer component and you, you can install the new one at that part so you can easily remove that dryer component and you can charge the system uh, charge the uh, the disk and material inside the dryer and you can uh, place inside the, uh, in between the running of the system only just you can close the wall and uh, you can run the system so you can remove the dryer here can charge the uh, desiccant material and again you can place here you can open the walls of this b and c the refrigerant will enter through the dryer and it will pass to the next two components so there will be a bypass line present here you can see that so just to see some few points regarding that the dryer cartridge or shell with chemicals can be removed okay so reinstalled with chemicals without interrupting the operation of the system as I already explained that now the dryer can also be used intermittently as and when needed so when there is a need um, when you observe some uh, <coughs> there is a little problem in the uh, in the system then you can operate the dryer you know, function of the dryer can be started there 
regarding the construction and features so in large systems dryer is installed in by bypass line uh, for large capacity plants like above more like 3 ton 4 ton 10 ton capacity there, there you can use these type of uh, the bypass line constructional refillable type dryers so when dryer is not used uh, not used the walls a and b are open uh, not used they directly flow through the this valve a and moves upward directly okay and uh, here the wall c has to be get closed completely so it will not enter through the passage of uh, this dryer uh, entry entry of a dryer cannot be taken place okay so there is no entry if you open the wall b also there is no entry to the dryer if you are not using the dryer next uh, if you if you want to use the service of that particular dryer the walls b and c has to be get open okay and valve a has to be closed if valve a is open the refrigerant will directly enters through the next section next component uh, if not uh, so what i have to do b and c walls has to open first it enters through the wall c and enters into the dryer through the entry and at the exit you can see it will move uh, through the wall b valve a has to close so walls b and c should not be closed at a time except when dry dryer uh, cartridge is being changed okay. both should not be closed simultaneously at a time should not be closed it will result some disturbances in that so when it has to done it means uh, when we have to close both the lines at uh, different times and uh, the dryer uh, the cartridge can be changed in the dryer it means um, whatever the disk and material is there it has to be removed and it can be changed here okay so this is uh, in today's class we have discussed regarding the evaporators function classification various types of evaporators and uh, seen some important application of a dryer and uh, types we have seen that some throw away type or non refillable type or sealed type and other important one that is the refillable type dryer so this is regarding the today's class and uh, just we have seen uh, look at uh, some question or piece part here the purpose of dryer is to remove just what you have done that is to remove the moisture content in the answer is b you can uh, get the answer from the, the video class you can from theory part you can see that and the removal of moisture is called uh, in this you can see what is the answer is the removal of moisture means dehydration so hydration in this sense adding the moisture content removal of moisture means dehydration so the cooling water temperature is maintained in shell and coil evaporator is so shell and coil i have told that it used in the application of water cooler so it should be maintained answer you can know that must and should maintain above 5 degrees centigrade or 5 degrees centigrade if it comes less than 5 what is there is a uh, the problem severity of uh, uh, the water will become into ice so must and should maintain above 5 degrees centigrade so that is the answer the operator is located in dash it means high pressure sir, or low pressure so already told in the first line that is it, it has to locate at the low pressure side of this answer you can note it down it is the third one it is a low pressure side Right. Evaporators which are widely used in air conditioning applications. We are told that most uh, number of application uh, in the refrigeration part using the finite type tube evaporator. The answer is A, finite type evaporator. Okay. The purpose of baffles is what happens? Very easy answer. Baffles just like a obstructions will be there in the flash chamber. So it will whenever uh, the vapor along with the liquid particles is moving it prevents the liquid particles entering into the compressor it will stops there and it will be false down okay. so these are the few questions you can note it down what is an evaporator what are the types of evaporator uh, list out of them draw a neat sketch and explain shell and tube evaporator draw a neat sketch and explain shell and coil evaporator and uh, other other questions so draw a neat sketch of flooded tube type of operator and explain its working. And next, draw a neat sketch of finned tube of operator and explain its importance in refrigeration system. Next, uh, regarding the dryers, what is dryer? Classify the dryers and draw a neat sketch of non-refillable type dryer is a very important one and uh, explain its constructional features. Why dryers are used? Again, the same place. What is the purpose? You can write there directly. Okay. 
so this is regarding the today's video session so hope you understood the regarding the topic what you have discussed and uh, the objectives as achieved in this class i, I hope that that is regarding the complete uh, things regarding the evaporator how it is getting the cooling effect there and uh, regarding the additional component we have discussed that is uh, some miscellaneous uh, items which are using in the components are using in the refrigeration that is a dryer uh, we are seeing the different types of the dryers seeing some quiz part uh, hope you, uh, you can answer them easily and uh, you can also uh, note it down the frequently asked questions from that so this is regarding the today's video lesson and in the next session we will see further uh, regarding the, some we we'll move on to the other topics uh, that is a uh, this is the end of up to the refrigeration equipment and further next we will see the uh, the applications of refrigeration that lot of applications will be there so we will deal uh, some of few of them in that they, which are very important so we can uh, go through that one by one in the next video session we will meet there okay so thanks for watching and uh, hope you will see in the next video session thank you just uh, we will watch a video regarding the